Yeah, you know, I, I, again, I'm pinching myself because basketball's here. We've had so many letdowns. You know, you Tennessee thought they were going to open up the season tomorrow night and play UT Martin, so you gear up for that. And, and Coach Barnes talked about it. There's so many starts and stops. It just it affects the players. So just excited it's basketball time in Tennessee. College basketball back in Knoxville as Colorado wins the opening tap. Now we get to see McKinley Wright the fourth get to work. Sean Bartholome did not get to play in the last game, but had a good debut in South Dakota. Buffalo's off to a 2 0 start this season. With Batty, solid defense by Pons, the reigning SEC Defender of the Year. Yeah, and he did his homework early. He didn't allow him to have that great post position uh, close to the basket. Josiah Jordan James doesn't hit the three pointer, but some contact and a foul. Yeah, you know, you expect early on in this season, especially from the Tennessee oh, Volunteers, man. not so much from Colorado, but you're going to see some nerves, some anxiousness. Uh, it, it's a matter of how quickly they can settle down. Uh, they're not going to have the advantage of having a huge crowd behind them. They're going to have to create their own mojo and play well early. 37% three-point shooter, one of the best for Tennessee last year. And you mentioned even when you've been watching some college basketball, guys are struggling some from the perimeter to get it going this year. They're really struggling, really struggling. You know, you, you cannot expect for Calipari's Kentucky, this version of Kentucky's team, to shoot the ball the way they're shooting right now. At some point, they're going to get better. They're going to round into form. But it's across the country. You know, you look at Duke. They didn't play well uh, last week and lost at home. So it, it's across the landscape. It's just going to be a matter of time before, you know, guys kind of settle down and get used to the environment. And for Tennessee, no usual Davidson scrimmage, which Coach Barnes loves doing. He didn't get to have the exhibition game. I mean, it's kind of two days. You kind of realize you're playing Colorado, and now it's time to play. Yeah, it's time to play. You know, they're going to lace their shoes up. We're going to lace ours up, and it's just a matter of who wants it more right now. James going three for three the line after he was found. So the Volunteers with an early three-point lead, second possession for the Buffs. A lot of screening action. You're going to see backdoor cuts. Coach Barnes talked about this at length uh, today in shoot-around. You've got to make sure that you've got to keep your head on the swivel, make sure that you're looking for, for back screens, cross screens. Already a rebound for Pons. Tennessee back to work. Wilkerson with his hands in the basketball for the first time this year. Look for him to go to work here. He does beautifully. That's, that's unstoppable because he shoots the ball at the very height of, of, of his jump. You know, he gets it up so high that it's hard to block and he kind of fades a little bit at the same time. Maddie away from the printer. It's really set up right. Going to work against Bailey. I really paint. like that matchup. I like yeah, that too. First score for Colorado. Now the ball's back to work. Santiago Viscovi, one of the most improved players on Tennessee's roster. Finally had some time to just calm down and get a little settled after starting last year in conference play, and he buries the tray. <laughs> he's, you know, he's picking up where he, where he left off. You know, you talk about a guy coming in mid-season, your very first game, you knock down six or seven threes, and, and, and you know, he, he's just got better and better and better. Didn't waste any time while he was away uh, overseas. He kept playing five on five, and you see the results. Tennessee didn't foul. The ball's ready to run. This is John Fulkerson. Yeah, that's big time. That's big time defense there without fouling. And this is where the Vols are going to make their mark on the defensive effort, uh, or defensive end. They're going to get stops and get out and run. Eight point Tennessee lead, not even three minutes into the first half. You know, Wright wants to get it going. Great cross screen action there. Well defended by Santiago Mosco. Bartholomew the long three, catches iron. Now saved in play, but the turnover gives it back to the big orange. When you look, you look at what Santiago does right here. Santiago coming off of the pass from Victor Bailey, feet set, knocks the three down. Then great defensive effort. Santiago sees the pass. It's a fooky slam, man. Must have had some pals today. <laughs> some Frenchy fries will make that happen. 
Now focusing on back to work. He's dangerous in spots like this. Kind of reminds you of Grant Williams, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, and the key, you know, they make sure to get him in a sweet spot there. The middle of the post there, 15 feet, usually he knocks those down. From outside. Colorado can't hit the three. So going back the other way. Yeah, this is where, you know, you, you, if you're if you're batty, you got to do your homework early, okay? Got caught with his hands in the cookie jar there, kind of shoved off a little bit. He's going to have to work tonight because they're going to put him in, in space and make him defend. We'll see what kind of shape he's going to be in towards the end of this game. Yeah, let's say 6'8", 262, but got to move against the front line. Hunt. Rimmed in and out. Fulkerson still going to work. And James cleans up the trash. That's why you love Fulkerson, because he's going to give you that max effort. That's great effort. Keeping that alive, give him the assist. 10 point Tennessee advantage, almost four minutes into the game. Buffs one for four from the floor so far. Now Maddie against Pons. Now Pons. He backed up. He backed up. Shouldn't back up. He's got to make sure that he keeps him off of the post. That's back up. Vescovi thought about it. Kicked out of play by Wright. And the first media timeout as John Fulkerson's led the way so far. Four points. Tennessee's off to a great start. What great effort here. The fans, if they were here, would love that max effort from Fulkerson. Keeping the ball alive for the volunteers, too been number 10. You could say maybe this year he's going to be a perfect 10, John Fulkerson. <laughs> well, he could be a perfect 10 because he does it outside and inside. You know, his game is, has matured and evolved to where he can knock down a three. But this is his money right here where he's given max effort. He's running the floor, coming off screens, and he finishes at or above the rim. Just a great, great basketball player. I mentioned it earlier when he got the ball at the top of the key and just started to go to work. It just reminded me immediately of Grant Williams and Coach Barnes has said we can run our offense through him like we did Grant. Yeah, you know, you, you saw just a little bit, a little bit of it there. We talked about it just a second ago, but you put him in that sweet spot right there in the middle of that high post. You clear it out to where you give him an option just to go one on one, or he's good enough to where he can drive and kick. And we got great enough shooters to knock down threes. More points for him already, and time for some big orange debuts. Keon Johnson ready to inbound the basketball. Fans love getting to see him go to work. Oh. Well, starts the travel. Welcome to college basketball. Well, you know, uh, Keon, a little happy there, got happy feet. But, but you talk about a much heralded freshman here because uh, uh, in some mock boards, he's ranked as high as number five, number six for the 2021 NBA draft. So, you know, fans are just chomping at the bit to get to see him play. Not only is he on the floor, but EJ Anasicki on as well. As Tennessee will get it back after the Colorado turnover. Great young class for Tennessee, as Dickie V would say, some diaper dandies. Freshman phenom, diaper dandies, whatever you want to call them, they are going to contribute in a big way for Coach Barnes this year. It's just a matter of carving out playing time for everyone at this point. Scobie running Tennessee's offense. James. That fake and Buffs get it back. Yeah, he should have shot it initially. You know, you, you, you get your feet set right away. No need to head fake. Just go ahead and put that shot up in rhythm. Still Colorado basketball. 18 on the shot clock, but hands up defense. This Tennessee team's really long this year. They're really long. They're talented. Uh, they're deep, and, and, and they're going to play well defensively because they're going to play in gaps. They're quick enough and they're fast enough to play in gaps, and that's going to create nightmares for opponents. Bellamy having a tough time getting it in play. He has to call timeout. Got to call timeout. I mean, he's looking at teammates like, now, now wait a minute. You know, you got to cut a little harder. We're used to playing against guys that are not so agile, not so quick. Got to cut a little harder. Coach Boyle will talk with his team as Colorado's trailing by 10 early on here in Knoxville. Talented head coach, who mentioned Coach Barnes, said that he was one of the more underrated coaches in America. Colorado to a great season a year ago. And where he's been through the years, yes, Tennessee. He was here under Jerry Greenstaff back in 97-98, so it feels like 98. Yeah, yeah, if you're looking at this picture, 
you, you're looking for a guy that doesn't have much hair. <laughs> but uh, he's going to show up here in a second. Bang, there he is. He's got the hair. Great basketball coach, uh, assistant coach Green very much uh, in the days of the Green Acres. That's right. Of course, his son was born here in Knoxville, son Jack. Everyone wanted to call his son Peyton because that's when Peyton decided to come back for his senior year. Ended up naming him Jack, and 22 years later, he's back in Knoxville for the first time. You think he's regret that? Peyton is the ghost. <laughs> And Jordan just side, side Jordan James stealing that one away. Now the balls go to work. Look for their secondary action right here. Johnson. Camp Cadets. Basketball to Colorado. Swan with the rebound. Schwartz. That's the three there. We can't forget to. You know, you, you, you talk about the nerves of the Tennessee players. Colorado traveled across two time zones to get here to play at a moment's notice. So, you know, it's going to be a tough start for them as well. Get their feet set, get their feet under them. I think they're going to be just fine. E.J. Anasicki draws the foul. Good move. Good move. Took two dribbles towards the middle. Spun away. Faded. That's a great move. Now, all the youngsters out there watching, one of the things that EJ did initially right away was face the basket. That's very important because you got to see how your opponent is playing you. If they're playing off, you take the shot. If they close out, you go by. Coach Barnes has said he is the most talented rebounder on this Tennessee team, and that's high praise when you consider yeah, guys like John Fulkerson and Eve Barnes are already on this roster. Yeah, because he plays with toughness. You know, he's a no-nonsense no -nonsense guy. Uh, he talks a lot on the floor defensively, uh, and he gets after it. Trains the second free throw. Falls by 11. Now some full court pressure. And you wanted to see if Tennessee would press more this year. Yeah, you know, we talked to Coach Barnes about that as well, and he wanted to extend pressure because he's got the legs. Now, initially, early on in the year, it's just a matter of guys, you know, being in great shape because you can't press unless you're in pretty good shape. But, uh, again, you know, they, they're, they're long enough and deep enough to press. Horn from the top of the key. Can connect on the three. Still live with Schwartz. Now, Tennessee basketball. Colorado's just having all sorts of problems getting to their offense, but they are creating some offensive rebounding opportunities and just not capitalizing on those. An offensive foul on Tennessee. I think that's going to go on Keon Johnson. So that's his first. And the first team fell on Tennessee as Colorado gets the basketball back. O of their last six from the floor, already off to a one for eight start shooting the basketball. Now we get to look at someone else that uh, could potentially go into the 2021 NBA draft, Jaden Springer. Uh, you know, this guy is a high flyer, great shooter, great defender. So, you know, if you're, if you're an opponent, you, you, you think, okay, well, they're going to their second five. Should be a letdown, right? <laughs> uh, not so much. Talented freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, played at IMG Academy in Florida, won the Geico National Championship there. More pressure. James already with active hands for Tennessee in the backcourt. All right, he'll try to get it going. He's connected on his only shot attempt so far. He's averaging 22 points a game in Colorado in the first two matchups. And Tennessee's doing a great job of hedging on screens. They're just, their bigs are coming out, they're hedging on screens, and it's creating this, you know, this dichotomy. What, what do I do here if you're McKinley? Do you, do, you, do you go to the basket? Do you go around? Do you give it to that pick and roll guy? So, you know, it, it puts them in a bind. Tennessee's for six turnovers. Springer. Desire and a sicky, the rebound. That's cool. Look at that energy. Put back its head. Wow. That's big time. You just carve out some space. That's big time. You know, you, you don't settle. You, 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 you do your homework early there. You, you knock uh, uh, number 41 clear out of the picture. You know, uh, Jariah Horn, he's got to do a better job of boxing out. Sends Anasicki back to the free throw line. Was one for two his last trip. 
Well, a very familiar name and number to Tennessee fans. His older sister Nikki played for the Lady Vols, won a couple of national championships. Also, his older brother OD played at Siena, transfers in from a Sacred Heart after a terrific career there. Very talented family. We'll see if Colorado can break what has been a tough scoring drought of five and a half minutes. Well, they got to get McKinley going. You know, he's got to get the ball up right now. He's got to come off of some screens here. He's got to move. Walker and connects. And rebound by Bailey. Scobie attacks, kicks it out. Here's Bailey. Yes. Whoa. Man, that's, that's just big time. You know, what are you going to do? You, you, you close out on Descovi because he's already hit a three, but you close out too much and let him have the pass to the basket and created a mismatch there. Right pressured by Fulgerson. Give it down low and the slam by Walker. Yeah, they needed that desperately. He's a good looking athlete. And a sicky being tough into the paint. Got it. What a shot. But it started with a really good pass from the Scovy. Really good pass. And a foul is going to be called as Anasiki came flying in again, showing off the athleticism. That's what Tennessee's been doing so far. You talk about this guy, Mr. Frosted Tips here, <laughs> with a great no-look pass. Who cleans it up in the corner? Victor Bailey. To four over Colorado in the season opener for the Big Orange and a long layoff since last year, a year that was getting better as time went along. Tennessee was one of the more hot teams down the stretch in the SEC. Yeah, they're playing well down the stretch. And, uh, you know, they're 17 and 14. Obviously, they had some work to do to get into the NCAA tournament, according to Lunardi. But, you know, they just wanted that chance to be on the floor at Bridgestone Arena. Well, Tennessee is getting some help, not just with the freshmen, but the transfers coming in, like the grad transfer EJ Anasicki already has made an impact today, both scoring and getting some rebounds. And then you looked at Victor Bailey Jr. He was around this program last year, had to sit out after the transfer from Oregon, but he has been ready to go today. Yeah, you know, I, I've been on that Victor Bailey wagon, man, that, that momentum train for a long time because he's a special type of player, man. There's, there's not a whole lot of guys that can play well defensively and offensively. Uh, that can shoot the ball the way he shoots the ball. And then you look at the tough guy, EJ Anasicki, man. They, Tennessee needed that presence in the middle, and they've got it with EJ Anasicki. Tough shooting so far for Colorado here in Knoxville. Scoreless round, but still Colorado 2 for 10 from the floor to begin this game. Beyond the arc for their first five. Kumas checked in for Tennessee as well. Um, I'm interested to see his match racing process from last year. Looks like he's chiseled a little bit more, got a little bigger. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he, run, he ran the floor well last year, but just never got his footing under him. So looking to see him get off to a good start. Scovey starts to drive after the fake. He's got a solid pass. Foul call on right. Or no, stepped out of play. Viscovi, you know, he, he is so, you, you look at him and you think that he's not that quick. But what he does is he utilizes that shot fake. And because he's such a good shooter, guys t have a tendency to leave their feet. And he goes right by him. Kimley Wright starting to attack. Yeah, lays it in. They're going to have to do more of that. They're going to have to clear out and let him go one on one. And he took advantage of Jaden Springer right there. Descobie floats it. There's Kamwa. That's a complete bust by Colorado there. But, you know, uh, Kumwa, I was afraid he's not going to be able to get that back up. You know, that cardinal sin for the big guys, they want to bring it down and gather momentum. Colorado is able to beat the floor right to Walker, and he's fouled. 
You look at McKinley right here, and, and he sees that the floor is open to his right side. You know, he's right-hand dominant. You really got to make him go left. So Springer's going to do a better job. You know, he's going to see this in film session, make him go left. Kari Walker of the line makes the first. Kenley Wright, again, one of the more talented players in college basketball. Active leader in career points in the Pac-12, over 1,300 in his career. Also the active leader in assists, second in rebounds, just does it all and has continued to get better throughout his time in Colorado. Yeah, you know, he's uh, all Pac-12 first team. Uh, you know, he is the he is the, the 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 straw that stirs that coffee. You know, he's got to come out be more aggressive uh, because he's such a great uh, uh, scorer. They have to have him be a scorer first and foremost. Evan Batty back in to try and get that inside low game going. And started as a freshman, 14 points per game. Always has been a consistent rebounder in his time as well, in addition to his Yeah, you know, nearly a little over four assists a game as well. Tennessee, a quick three. Malik. It's just pure, you know. I don't even think that it's touched the rim. You know, the times that he shot the ball, it's all bad. He's also drawn the assignment of trying to guard right. Now Batty. It's Kamwa. Takes it back out. Clifford. Marries it. Better offense. You know, they were patient. Got kind of the shot that they want. That's good offense with the Bucks. Shot clock down to 10 for Tennessee. Yeah, this is the deepest they've gone into the shot clock. <laughs> Bailey, really got some separation. Here's Pons from deep, just short. Yeah, that was a rush shot. Uh, you know, you want to see Pons be able to kind of loosen up a little bit on the inside and then work his way outside, but that was a rush shot because the shot clock was counting down. Evan Batty. Driving right, spinning. Couldn't get it to go. It's a good shot, my bad, yeah. though. Good move. Created some space. No, 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 no. So we tried to go to Pons. Tennessee turns it over. And here's where you know, the starting stops for Tennessee may be playing a factor. And also, you got to consider as well, in terms of going up and down the floor, Tennessee has only been able to do that three times in the last two weeks in terms of really hard scrimmaging. Yeah, let's not forget about that. Tennessee, you know, as we see an offensive foul here by Kumwa on the screen. But you look at the fact that Tennessee just really got back into the gym this past Friday and, and had no idea who their opponent was going to be. The guys were doing some of their own individual work, but it's tough to build that camaraderie that you need going up, going into a season. You always want to be pr focused at practice, Friday practice. You know, you're really thinking, okay, we got to start getting ready for UT Martin. Okay, that game's canceled. Saturday practice, oh, uh, who are we going to play? And then you learn it's Colorado kind of as time went along. Yeah, you know, again, you, you look at the fact that Coach Barnes really talked about the biggest thing that affected his team was the starting and stopping. He thought that the older guys could handle it because they've been there before. But the younger guys, they don't know what they don't know. Coach Barnes not too happy with Patrick Evans, Gerald Williams, and Jerry Pollard, our officials for that last sequence. Kenley Wright can't get the jumper to go. Keon Johnson defended uh, 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 Wright much better than Jaden Springer. How about Victor Bailey? And he's on fire right now. Another three-pointer is the junior's got eight points. Sorry, two and two from beyond the arc. Colorado's not getting anything easy. Tennessee is making them work. It's Victor Bailey's enjoying his Rocky Top debut. Yeah, what a great pass by Josiah Jordan James. And when you're shooting with confidence, it goes in. Victor Bailey with another three. The network and the ESPN app. Number 12 Tennessee host Appalachian State in Knoxville at 7 Eastern, 6 Central.
Then, Furman is in Tuscaloosa to take on Nate Oates, John Petty, and that exciting Crimson Tide motion offense. Just glad to have basketball back as Tennessee has opened up to a 16-point lead in their season opener. And the newcomers, including Victor Bailey Jr., looking really sharp, Steve. Looking really, really sharp. You know, uh, as, you, as you look around Thompson Bullock Arena, there's you know, upwards of 4,000 people here, but he's already putting on the show for the, the people that are here and the many, many people that wish that they were here. Yeah, Tennessee capped at 18% capacity for these home games to start the year. Close to 4,000 fans allowed. Normally, of course, 21,000. Rosh Plopsic in the game for the first time for Tennessee. They find him here. Plopsic. Couldn't get it there. Good soft touch. You know, you you, you uh, want to see Plopsic really get his footing under him as well because he could be such a commanding presence being seven feet tall. Colorado still looking for its first three-pointer today. Patty inside, draws the foul from Pons. Yeah, I, I think if you're, you know, if you're Colorado, you've really got to make a concerted effort to work from the inside out sometimes. You got Batty with a great presence, got a great, you know, great body there and can really sit down in the post and create some space. You got to utilize that. Described as the emotional leader of that Colorado team. John Fulkerson back in for Tennessee. Already scored four points with a rebound. Tennessee switching all screens. You know, they've got the ability to do that because they can, they can go small, play small ball, or they can be, play big as well. Three minute scoring draw for Colorado. Horn ends the drought. It's good offense. Good offense. Colorado settled into a 2-3 zone. I think you you have to do that. Tennessee's still shooting about 56% from the two-point range and 60% from three. So just trying to get a different look, maybe slow them down. And again, you know, it slowed Tennessee down enough to where the shot clock is also winding down. Bailey at five. Can't connect. Wide open right, the fake, find Schwartz. He can hit three. But Batty sticks and gets the rebound. That's what Colorado has to do. Yeah, they need those second chances right now to kind of get themselves back in the game. He fights and scores. What a possession there for Evan Batty. And a timeout taken by Coach Barnes, not happy with what he saw there. No, Coach Barnes is not going to be happy. Uh, he's not going to be happy with Fulkerson, not going to be happy with Keon Johnson for flying out and leaving his feet. But, you know, again, carving out space is what Batty's got to do. You know, you, you set a screen here and you don't settle. You carve out some space using that big wide body and score. Well, Evan Batty, really the emotional leader of this team, had a really tough situation early in his time at Colorado. He had a tough situation academically because some things happened in the eighth and ninth green that set him back a little bit. So he had to redshirt when he first got to Colorado due to academic reasons. And during that time, he just had a stroke, had two seizures right after that. A really scary time for him, but he has worked his way back on this Colorado team. Yeah, glad to see him doing well. You know, I did play his senior year of high school and and uh, had the stroke, as you talked about, and had to learn to talk. You know, had to learn to do the simple things all over again. And uh, you look at where he's come from, just happy for him. So three months to recover from that stroke, just such difficult circumstances, but he's persevered, turned into an outstanding basketball player in Colorado. Fulkerson from three. Well, short. Yeah, that's not really his game right now. Again, you know, we talked about it in the open. Uh, that he has the ability to do that, but that's not where he wants to hang his hat. He wants to be a rim attacking, high flying, you know, guy that they need, uh, that Tennessee needs him to be. He's heard a lot from Coach Barnes already. Tonight. 
the zone has really bothered Tennessee, you know? And, and again, this is one of those things that, you know, how much has Tennessee had a chance to work on this? Uh, because this has really slowed them down. Yeah. Soon couldn't hit an open jumper. <laughs> now he gets the steal. Fulkerson, offensive foul. I'd like to see that one again. I, I, I don't know that I agree with that call. I'd like to see it again. It looked like a little bit of a flop. Great hands get into the passing lane. I don't think that uh, I don't think that the feet were set. It was right at the line as well. Yeah, it's right at the line. I don't think Horn's feet were set. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. But you know, you're going to get some of those, and you're not you're going to you know lose some of the other ones. Second foul on Fulkerson. Okay, you got to go. Yes, and now Tennessee. Three-minute scoring drought as the Vols just wanted their last seven yeah, on the floor and missed their last five shots. And you knew this was coming. You know, Roger, you knew that uh, at some point in time that was going to happen. And a hand-check foul called in Tennessee. Yeah, and this puts uh, Colorado, Colorado at the line to shoot one and one. And they can, you know, kind of get a little closer here. They can get to within nine by putting McKinley on the line. Well, that's McKinley right the fourth free throw line. Four points for him already today. He's been two for three from the floor, but just hasn't had open looks. Tennessee's been guarding him very well. Yeah, this is by far the cleanest look he's going to see. Every NBA players, late Kobe Bryant, Damian Lillard, average at least 13 points per game every season in Colorado, and he's going to be one of the more decorated players in Buffs history. I can kind of see that Damian Lillard mm -hmm. in him, you know, not afraid to take the big time shot, talk a little bit, you know, while you're going back down after training a three. Turnover on Tennessee. That's what Coach Barnes does not want to see, and that's what he was kind of worried could be the rustiest thing about this group heading into yeah. the season over. Yeah, and you're, you're starting to see a little bit. That's a couple turnovers from Scobie now. Game nine turnovers on Colorado, seven on the ball. Three pointer won't go. Here comes Tennessee in transition. This is where Tennessee really wants to be. They want to get out and run and score in transition because when they're stagnant, and, and again, this 2 3 zone has made them stagnant. Hans ends the drought. That's going to be wide open all night. That, the middle of that zone is going to be wide open because Colorado's really got to get out on those three point shooters. Tell me around the screen. Now he's caught in the sweet spot. He's got to go to work. It's the reigning SEC Defender of the Year. <laughs> Score at the top. It will still stay Colorado basketball when we come back from this timeout on the floor. So far, it's Tennessee in front by 11. Scheduling is done a year in advance. Try three days. That's what Tennessee had to do with UT Martin having some COVID issues. So Kim English, Tennessee assistant coach, previously was on the staff at Colorado. So he went to work, got on the phones and visited with Nate Tomlinson, who is point guard for Colorado. And he of course knew him on the staff when English was in Boulder. And they put this game together. And again, just a span of three days, here we are playing basketball. Yeah, kudos to, to Coach English for being able to get this done. Uh, and unsurprisingly, uh, he had the scout for this game as he recruited and, and coached a bunch of guys that are on the current roster. So uh, just a great job by both universities kind of putting this game together at the last second. Hey, Tomlinson, director of player development, handles all the scheduling for Colorado. He and Kim continue to be great friends, and that's one of the great things we've seen throughout the years in college basketball. Anytime you see some great, fun non-conference matchups, it usually starts with a friendship. Yeah, it starts with a friendship. And, you know, again, kudos for both the administrations for putting this together as well, because this is not this is not going to be an anomaly. You know, they're going to play out in Boulder next year, and they're going to play at uh, Bridgestone in Nashville the following year. So, you know, it could be an intersectional rivalry that could erupt. 
That's what you'd love to see. The Pac-12 meeting the SEC. What an opener for Tennessee to schedule a Power 5 team to begin the year after all the uncertainty. Oh, he wouldn't get it to go. A foul call on the way down. Yeah, that's a good call on Santiago Piscopi. He kind of switched out a little bit, and, and he was left on someone bigger. Uh, that, that, you know, had to push off here just a little bit, push off more. Got caught. But that's, you know, one of the disadvantages to switching. You know, you're going to get caught on someone that you can't guard. So uh, uh, that really hurt Tennessee in that aspect. Dry Horn at the line. His father, Jarrell Horn, played at Memphis. Along with now the Tigers' current head coach, Penny Hardaway. He's 6'7", 220. He's now on his third school, started his career in Nebraska, then two years at Tulsa, averaged 10 points a game there. And now it's to finish up with Colorado. Bit of a journeyman, but, you know, again, you like his size. You like what he can bring. He can rebound. He can defend. Turning the line, making it a nine-point game as Tennessee turns it over. Flipping over the table, Victor Bailey, Jr. Santiago did uh, the unthinkable there by picking up his dribble. You know, he, they worked on that extensively today as well. As you hope that Victor Bailey's okay, but you see that athleticism. Man, I would have tumbled. I'd still be falling. Right into me. David Grimm. <laughs> I think he's good to go. <laughs> Colorado hasn't had a field goal in nearly three minutes. And off it's a foul call. Jabari Walker. Which boy will not have Jabari Walker trying to set that jam down screen here. Or I'm sorry, pick and roll action. Just look that left leg out, gain the advantage. Buffalo staying in that zone. Again, you gotta look at that sweet spot. Right at that SEC. You know, you're gonna have someone catch it right there. You catch it in the middle. You face or you turn and look out of the pass. Test of three wouldn't go. Basketball. Go back to Colorado. Fans are not excited about that one as well. Colorado's getting the benefit of a lot of 50-50 calls here. Just taking a look at it here. Yeah, I think it definitely off of Schwartz. Off of Schwartz there. Now Colorado's going to take advantage. Yeah, you know, Tennessee was off to a torrid start, you know, but uh, they've slowed down quite a bit. They're, they're in that zone, it's really bothering them. This is the action they want there with McKinley. Finds Bartholomew. Buries the three. Now a six point two possession game. Now, if you're Rick Barnes, who's the guy that you got to get the ball to to score? You know, you look at the guys on the floor right now, and I would certainly consider looking at Eve Ponce, but not, a, at, not on the perimeter. Eve Ponce has got to get down on the block. Tough stretch here for Tennessee. the ball is you can't let the offensive struggles carry over the defensive end. Yeah, and, and you know, Colorado's got into a better rhythm. They've settled down. You know, they're running their offense and they're knocking down shots. 12-2 run last five minutes, but here's a turnover. Let's see if this can get the balls going. Right, got to take that shot. Had some spacing there for a moment. Because, again, you let that zone get set. Now, now it's, it's, you know, finding the best next look. Action around the perimeter. Shot clock down to 10. I'm one of the paints. Top two wouldn't go. A lot of their shots are short right now. And, again, you wonder if conditioning is playing a role because they're not getting up quite as high. Moves by Horn, and he'll finish. Four-point game. This is the game that we expected, though. You know, Tennessee got off to that hot start, but you expected this game to, the, you know, the gap to shrink a little bit, and now it's a four-point lead. 
Scoby to step back. Ah, needed that one. Needed that one. Great head and shoulders fake. He utilizes that so well to get the Buffalo defender off of his feet. Steps to the back, knocks the three down. Balls back in front by seven. Shot clock turned off as Colorado looks for one last shot. If you're Tennessee, you want to get a defensive stop here going into halftime. Look for that pick and roll action. Bartholomew. Can't connect, and the Volunteers will take a seven-point lead into the locker room. Probably could have got a better shot than that. Well, it was Tennessee that was off to the really good start. We've seen good runs by the Vols, good runs by the Buffs. This has been an entertaining first 20 minutes. Very entertaining first 20 minutes. Vols got off to a torrid start. Colorado settled down, got back into the ball game, and now this is the type of ball game that we expected to see a close matchup between two Titans in basketball. Balls up seven at the break. Opener with the lead at the break, 31 to 24 over Colorado as we get ready to begin the second half of action. This is Roger Hoover alongside Steve Hamer. And Steve, what do we see in the first 20 minutes here at Thompson Bowling? Yeah, we thought it was going to be McKinley Wright, you know, averaging over 20 points a game, but it's been the Gerard Horn show. He's really kept him in it. He's got seven points, and, you know, he utilizes his body well, knocks down shots outside and in shot inside. Great job. Now, on Tennessee's side, Santiago Viscovi got off to a torrid start. Shoot the ball well. When he gets his feet set, utilizes the up and under screen here, right there, he knocks him down very consistently. And then his running mate, Victor Bailey Jr. Man, I've been excited to see this guy play all summer long, and he is as advertised. Pure shooter, great defender, and played a great amount of minutes for Coach Barnes. He, he can do it on both ends of the floor, defensively and offensively as well. So kudos to both of those players. And Jariah Horn, looking forward to seeing him play more in the second half. Here's a look at the stats. Tennessee shot 46%, had just some lulls at times, started really strong, and then you maybe saw a little bit of tired legs. Again, this is a basketball team that has not been able to practice like normal getting ready for the year. Yeah, and if you're Colorado, you got to be really happy with the fact that you're shooting 33% and you're within seven. You know, this game could have gotten away from you very quickly, but, you know, that's why uh, they've got a great coach over there on that sideline, and he decided to go to that 2-3 zone. It slowed Tennessee down dramatically. You know, they're used to getting out and running and gunning and, you know, high-flying and dunking and all this other stuff. He says, wait a minute, we're going to slow you guys down and force you to play some basketball on the half-court side. Second half is underway, and the other key stat we saw, rebounds, 16 for Colorado, 14 for Tennessee. And Coach Boyle told us if we're going to win this game, we have to win the rebounding battle. And Coach Barnes, that's a huge point of emphasis for his group. Yeah, you know, you, you listen to uh, what Coach Barnes was preaching about. They've got to do a better job of, of securing those boards. And taking care of the basketball. Taking care of the basketball. The media turnover. Kenley right the fourth. Finding for Bellamy. Another three. He's had two good open looks that he hasn't knocked down. Good ball movement. This is what we saw, especially in the last six or seven minutes of the game. Tennessee just staying around the perimeter, didn't go inside as much. No, look for Fulkerson or Pons to step right there. Now turn and face. See what you got. It's just that easy, but you got to knock those shots down. A slow start, one for five from the floor to begin this game. Bartholomew, nice kick back to Daniels. Got it. Yeah, they're playing with all sorts of uh, momentum right now. Maddox Daniels, a senior from Suwannee, Georgia. Four-point game here in Knoxville. He's led from the get-go in this one. Fulkerson puts it in. Hey, that, you know, if, if Colorado is going to be consistent in playing that zone, if they're going to be dogmatic about it, Tennessee's got to be dogmatic about getting that ball at that SEC logo and playing inside out. Maddie from D. That's not his game. He's one of those inside players that has been doing some good work today. 
Now, you know, right here, that's a good effort on, on the extra pass there. Could have taken that shot. Great effort on the extra pass and Fulke catching it. Again, he kind of fades away, shoots it at the very tip top of that jump, knocks it down. Just picked up his third foul. Still 18 minutes left to go in this game. Teaching moments with Rick Barnes. Out he attacks, finds Daniels, who hit three a moment ago. Got away with the travel there to Daniel. Kenley Wright. Oh, they get the slam with Walton. Walton right there, Johnny on the spot. Great pass. One point game again. Now you wonder if Anasiki can catch it right here, turn around and make that. Jumps out to Muscovy, shot clock down to 10. And a foul called on right. Right call, that's the right call. That'll be his first. Good penetration there. You know, Tennessee's really got to do a better job, and that falls on Victor Bailey there. You, if you're going to play the perimeter, if you're going to play tough nose defense, you've got to keep the guy that you're defending on the perimeter, keep him in front of you. Walton's been off to a good start, averaging seven and a half points, three and a half rebounds per game in Buffs' first two contests. He's trying to build a four point lead. Pons, short. Every one of Pons' shots has hit the front iron. Every one of them. Bartholomew with a slam. Two that, point game. That's unacceptable. If you're Coach Barnes, you're livid because this is what you do. You got to sprint the floor. You fell asleep and you gave up an easy bucket, and that was a dogfight. And a sickie from the baseline, his jump roll and go. Here comes Colorado, a chance to tie it with a two, take a lead with a three. Yeah, that's not necessarily his his game either. Bartholomew left it short, pawns the rebound. See, pushing. Got to make that pass if you're Pons. Josiah George James is there with a wide open three. Good hit there, and some contact underneath. Yeah. You look at Colorado here, this is something that Tennessee wants to do. McKinley with his head up, got a guy streaking the floor for the dump. Great offense by the Buffs. Keyshawn Bartholomew, five points for him today. And that's after he got off to a tough start shooting the basketball, but if he gets to the rim, he can connect. Yeah, you know, he, he's a good looking athlete as well. Uh, does a little bit of everything for the Buffs. He's also a very young guy as well. He reclassified early to join them. Fall of 2019, got to redshirt all of last season and learned how to play college basketball from the sidelines. It's paid off. He had 11 in his debut, and he's been solid tonight. Bailey. In and out. Yeah, that, that looked like that was uh, three-fourths of the way down. Tennessee's got to lock in defensively here now. You know, they're in a battle. Colorado's running some good stuff. We knew that they were going to do that. I'm looking at the, the scout this afternoon with Tennessee. They run some good offense. Kenley right the fourth. Going up with it, Tennessee gets it back. The Scoby to the rim. Colorado outscoring Tennessee 7-2 to begin the second half as we go to break on this foul. Half on a 7-2 run to make it a two-point game in Knoxville, and this is a program that did very well last year before the shutdown due to COVID-19. 21 and 11, they had a winning mark in Pac-12 play. Likely was a tournament team. Yeah, I think they were going to be a tournament team. Uh, you know, even though they lost their last five games of the season, you look at that resume. The Pac-12 is a good conference, and you look at the wins. Dayton. It's a very good basketball team. Oregon, well coached, uh, just a class act out of Oregon. They play well. Washington, USC twice. Uh, you know, they, they got a good basketball team and they were picked to finish seventh. I was in surprised the by that. Yeah. I, I think that's exceedingly low. 
Uh, and, and you look at someone like Coach uh, Tad here and, and, and you look at what he has put together, uh, got some, some, some experienced guys, got some younger guys infused with that. You know, I think that seven is a little bit too low. Yeah, really talented teams in front of them, and the good thing is they will be able to face them, face them at their home in Boulder where they've been so good throughout the years. It's a Colorado team as well that gets off to a good start over the last three years. They've been 18-1 and one in the month of November. That's second best in the nation behind Virginia. 22-1, that's our last national champion. Yeah, we know what Virginia can do. One well, opportunity here to tie it up or take the lead as Tennessee has led from the get-go in this contest. Great Ryan defense. lost the basketball. Keon Johnson ties it up. Great defense by Keon Johnson. We need to get a, 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 another look at that because he moves his feet. Now, all the youngsters out there, he moves his feet. He goes in, tries to get the ball with two hands, does a great job of getting and then gets on the floor for it. That is the spark that Tennessee needed right there. A great game for Johnson to make his debut, getting to go up against somebody like McKinley Rose. And he's going to cause a turnover here. Ah, Deion Johnson getting fired up. That's what they needed. You know, again, you know, he gets into that passing lane. He's uber quick, very agile, uses that right arm, right hand here, swipe around, and goes right off of McKinley's knee. Great defensive effort there. Now Tennessee trying to end an over three minutes scoring drought. The balls have missed their last four shots. Johnson does not miss here. Now, now we, you know, we got a glimpse of what Coach Barnes was drawing up there <laughs> at the timeout. We saw those double screens there, and we knew something special was coming. Tennessee grows it back to a four-point lead. Maddie attacks Pons. Escobie with the help defense for the big orange. Here come the balls. Escovi brings the rain. That's what Tennessee wants to do right there. I'm telling you, Rob, they want to get out and run. They got to get these young puppies to grow up quick, and they want to get out and run. Well, Tennessee turning it on. Five points in a flash for the Big Orange as Tennessee starting to feel it in Knoxville. games with SEC Nation, hosted by Laura Rutledge, Roman Harper, Tim Tebow, and Jordan Rogers. We'll have live reports from stadiums, features, and all the game breakdowns. We're just doing it with social distancing in mind, and you, the fans, will still be part of the show. SEC Nation, presented by Johnsonville, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Oh, a good stretch for Tennessee, scoring five points in that last sequence, and notably with some newcomers. Yeah, what's the common denominator in those quick, that quick burst of points? You're looking at it right there, Keon Johnson. You know, he gets a strip steal there that leads to a tie ball. Then he gets another steal that leads to a turnover uh, and gives the balls that extra possession. Then he gets a dunk. You know, how about your first basketball <laughs> action? You, you get a high-flying dunk. And for him, he's proud, I'm sure, that it happens after defense. That's what Coach Barnes really liked about Keon Johnson and Jaden Springer. Didn't have to kind of tell them, hey, you got to start with defense. No, these guys already had that mindset. And for some highly touted freshman recruits like they are, that's sometimes the last thing to come. But for those guys, it's been the first. It's all about buying into Coach Barnes's concept here. You're going to play defense. I don't care who you are. You know, if you're not playing defense, you're going to sit the, sit the bench next to me. And nobody wants to do that. Tennessee protecting a seven point lead. Daniels short on the three. Here come the balls in transition. To get the ball once again. See that middle, it's wide open for a reason. They, they really respect Santiago's shooting ability, so they get, gotta get the ball in the middle right there. Turnover on Tennessee, trying to feed Anasiki. Roger, they're doing most of this with Fulkerson being on the bench. He's got three fouls right now. Fulkerson has had six points and a rebound in his 2021 debut. And a scoring drought for the Buffaloes over three minutes. Sean Bartholomew. Right, driving against Anasiki, and a foul's called. Anasiki can't believe it. Yeah, I'm not buying that one either. Uh, 
I, that is, you know, I'd like to get another look at that one because you're looking at that principle of verticality here. I, that's that's not a foul. That that is absolutely 100% not a foul. That, that's a that's a terrible call. And I know it's early season for the officials too, and they, they're wearing masks, you know. But fellas, you know that, that's a terrible call on textbook defense from Anasiki. Here's right at the line, and he misses the first. Justice. You know, I know a lot of high school kids out there watching the game saying, ball don't lie. <laughs> and a sickie picking up. His second foul, he and Fulkerson and Viscovi, multi fouls. Everyone else with one or less. Ball don't lie again. Ball don't lie, man. Still a seven point Tennessee lead. Here's Ponds. Can't connect. That's a bit of a makeup call there, in my opinion. I think that's a bit of a makeup call. Uh, you know, a little physicality in the post there, but nothing to speak of, no, nothing to warrant a foul there. But he's just off target tonight right now. You know, he's really off target. One for seven shooting. He hasn't attempted anything from beyond the arc. We heard that that could be more part of his game along with Fulkerson this year to try and stretch the floor. But right now, Tennessee just needs to get into the paint and score there, establish that inside dominant game like they, we know they're going to have this year. Yeah, they, they got to get the ball inside. It, it, it's just, it, it opens the outside up so much more. Tipped out of play by Schwartz. Still Tennessee basketball with six seconds left on the shot clock. Got to get something quick. You know, it, it, one of the things that you can utilize against this 2 3 zone is getting into the gaps, creating that space so that you can have double team, have a double team come at you, and then you get the ball out to an open shooter. James and Anasiki to work. Gonna get it to go, pouring the rebound. Again, you, you're just not quite sure that that's EJ's range right now. Horn. Yes. Horn does it again, man. I'm telling you, Dry Horn's a good looking player. Back to a four point game. Side Jordan James to Vescovi. To Ponds. Strong from beyond the arc, making contact underneath. Yeah, Ponds is really struggling right now. You know, he is he's scuffling out there. Uh, that's an air ball. You know, again, it's early season. Uh, he's not in mid-season form uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, at some point, he just needs something to go in. You want to see him drive more instead of the jumpers? I think so. You know, that's got to be the next step, the evolution of his game, to be able to put the ball on the floor. And I think that's what he's going to have to do if he plays at the next level. He's going to have to put the ball on the floor and go buy something. Fulkerson just re-entered with three fouls. Tennessee connects from downtown. Yeah. Jake Springer, you know, he shot that with confidence, and that's what – these guys are not coming in here to sit the bench. You know, Jaden Springer and Keon Johnson, they won't play in time, and they're, they're beaming with confidence. His first points in a Tennessee uniform. Schwartz contested well short as it was tipped around. Basketball will stay with Colorado. Good effort by Anna Sicky to block that shot and get a piece of it. But right here, starts out, inside out, got a wide open look. Knocked down. James Spring. Quickly to Horn. Another piece. Basketball back to the big orange. Tennessee to Fulkerson. Inside out. And a good act. And a sickie there for the board. And a sickie. Put it in. That's the type of offense that Tennessee needed right there. The stick to it if you will. Josiah Jordan James and the Vols. Now Tennessee starting to look more like themselves. Yeah, get this assist right here to the big man in the middle, carving out space and a sicky. Josiah Jordan James cleans everything up with a deuce. Go 
Roby, top scorer so far with Tennessee with nine points, doing it all for the Vols. Yeah, he's doing a great job again. You know, he gets those feet set, and he's sneaky quick as well, you know? So when, when he gets those feet set and he knocks down shots, then all of a sudden defenders close out on him, so then he goes by and knocks down shots. But he assisted the ball as well, just an all-around great start to the season for Santiago. Nine points, two rebounds, four assists so far to lead the way for Tennessee. Again, he leads the team with nine points, no one in double figures just yet. We've seen some balanced scoring. It's Tennessee's very balanced roster. Roger, how do you think I'd look with those frosted tips? You, you, I mean, be tough right now. Be tough, yeah. For, I'd have to grow some. In your college hairstyle, you could have yes, done it. Yes, yes, yes. And the and one good for Josiah Jordan James. Just had that great tip in and drew the foul right before he went to break as he's having a balanced night so far. He's done a great job. You know, he's matured, he's, his body looks better. Dealt with several injuries last year. Let's be honest, you know, he was a five star coming in, had a lot of pressure on his back. You know, Lamonte Turner decides to leave a little bit early, and that puts all the onus on Josiah Jordan James' shoulder to run the show. It was tough. Tennessee with solid defense, trying to continue a 6-0 run. Springer trying to go to Fulkerson, but a lot of contact. Got a great look by Springer. Kept that ball alive. Great, great look here. Kept his eyes up. It's a great pass. Horn with the foul. Now, if you're Coach Barnes, you want to see if your team can pull away at this point. You know, Colorado made a game of it. You want to see if you've got enough experience to just pull away. Yeah, it's like he can't connect from the elbow. Stanley Wright. He's really struggled tonight as well. Hadn't really gotten into a rhythm, gotten anything going. So good passing here. It's a three-pointer. Horn with the offensive rebound. Fulkerson a little slow to get up. Yeah, Coach Barnes definitely not going to be happy about this. More offensive rebounds for Colorado. Right again. Gets his own miss. Here's Horn with the three. Four times the charm. That's four offensive rebounds. You know, if you're Tennessee, you got to box out. They're not going to quit. Back to a seven-point game. It stays that way. Horn against Fulkerson. Some space. Good get it there. Basketball back to Tennessee. Midway through the second half, Springer. I missed Fulkerson on the opportunity to get that ball early post there. That's a great post by Fulkerson. And a sicky. Again, connect from that elbow. That's not his game right now. You know, sometimes you got to recognize what you're doing great at as opposed to what you can be great at. You know, he later on in the season, he may knock those shots down, but for right now, you got to pass up those opportunities. One for six from the floor, EJ and a sicky. And kind of similar to Pons. A lot of those tight jumpers we've seen him on the baseline, son. Barnes wants him to get to the rim. Yeah, I mean, that his niche right now in this basketball team is, is to talk, carve out space, and get rebounds. That's what he's got to do right now. Now Fulkerson to the line. Six points. Knocks down front end. Now coming into his senior season from Kingsport, Tennessee. Of course, my hometown as well. Favorite restaurant is Pals. Hey, my favorite restaurant as well. I do not enjoy whole milk. I won't touch it. But I do love Pals. Frenchy fries, big pal plain with cheese, large Frenchy fry, and a sweet tea. Now, Roger, you, you got to go double. Double big pal with bacon. You, you got to do that in the large Frenchy fry. I could do that in high school. I probably shouldn't now. What does that say about me? <laughs> So, of course, went to Dobbins Bennett High School before going to the Christ School in North Carolina. Loose on the floor. De Silva trying to keep it alive. What a battle here. Johnson came out of there with it, and he yeah. traveled. Yeah, he got up off of the floor. Got up off of the floor. You know, it, 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 that's great effort from Keon Johnson. 
you know, that's great effort from, from all of us there on that side of the floor. Victor Bailey, you want to see him get down and not try to take off with it. But Keon gets up here, has to realize he's playing at the D1 level. Got to stay on the floor, pass it, and then get up again. Still looking at that right hand. That stung his finger with all the contact. Still an opportunity for Colorado to try and get closer. I mean, they're hanging around just enough, Roger, to make this a game. Again, you know, if you're Tennessee, if you're Coach Barnes, you want to see that killer instinct from your basketball team to put them away. Right start to attack feeds Bartholomew. And the buzzer didn't get it to go. A shot clock violation. Great defensive effort from Tennessee there. Olivier Kamwa back into the game for Tennessee along with Victor Bailey Jr. A good night in his Tennessee debut. John Fulkerson has been a little slow the last couple minutes after a lot of contact on the defensive end. Yeah, and I think he's tired, as most of the guys are. Uh, for the Tennessee basketball team, they're tired. You know, you, again, you have such a layoff. You got all the stops, and the starts. You know, we're playing tonight. We're playing a team next week. You know, and it's rough on the guys, so their 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 legs are not quite up to par. Playing a physical guy like Maddie as well, six eight, two hundred sixty pounds. Here's Johnson. Nice pass. Oh, he's got to shoot that. Olivier. Can't get it there. Why pass up a five-footer to get a seven-footer? Colorado too quick on that possession. Johnson really seeing the floor. Lock drafts have him as projected number five, maybe number six overall pick in the NBA draft next year. Tonight is a Legion debut for the Tennessee Volunteers. Colorado gets the steal. Bad pass. You know, sometimes if you're just out towards danger and you want to make that post entry, you got to fake a pass to make a pass. Or got the space. Gets down low. Tennessee will get it back. Walton wanted to foul. I think both teams are out of kilter right now. They're both teams are tired. Might do Tennessee well to take a timeout and, and, and come up with a play out of a timeout that can give you a quick two. And a kickball will lead us to a timeout on the floor. So Tennessee and Colorado kind of struggling at this point to hit some shots. Yeah, both teams are struggling right now. Needed that break. If you're a Tennessee fan, you want to see them get a quick two after this timeout. CC Network and the ESPN app. Number 12, Tennessee host Appalachian State in Knoxville at 7 Eastern and 6 Central. Then, Furman is in Tuscaloosa to take on Nate Oates and the Crimson Tide. SEC basketball, Tennessee the second to last team to get going. The Vols with a 45-37 lead over Colorado in the season opener. So everyone's looking to see what the Vols can do. The media picked them to win the SEC. The coaches picked Kentucky. Here's what's happening so far in the league. Yeah, you know, Conzo's got a good thing going up in Columbia. I really think he's got a talented basketball team, and I think they're probably picked a little bit low. And don't be startled right now that Kentucky is stumbling out of the gates. You know, given the fact that they too have dealt with this pandemic, they were going to be a little bit slowed out of the gates as well. They're going to bounce back. They're going to play well. And Auburn, 22 threes? Man, that, that's <laughs> absolutely tearing it up. It's Bruce Pearl basketball, but even to a bigger degree than what we've seen before. The league is so good this year. The league is great, it's talented, and it's deep. Uh, and, you know, again, I think that Tennessee and Kentucky are going to be vying for uh, the championship when it's all over, it's all said and done. Tennessee was trying to feed Pons down low, the kickball in the key position with the big orange. But look where the ball got to. Got to the sweet spot there, middle post there. And, and Fulkerson did a great job of turning around and facing. Still Tennessee basketball, Bartholomew right in front of Pons. I like this lineup as well. You know, you got Josiah Jordan James taking a break and Keon Johnson kind of spelling him a little bit. I like this lineup. Look at the high post. Now turn and face. 
John. Oh. Left a bit short, Fulkerson. Basketball back to the Buffs. Yeah, he got that contact, and it, it kind of knocked him off his path a little bit. Eight-point deficit. Colorado's hit one of its last ten from the floor. Has a score here for three minutes. Gimli Wright, the fourth, can do some scoring. He feeds down low, and Walton draws the foul. That's great offense. Great offense. That's great offense, and, and really, that's a good foul by Keon Johnson as well, because I think that would have been an easy two. So make him, uh, make him make the baskets here at the free throw line. Dallas Walton to the free throw line, senior from Arvada, Colorado. Had to persevere a lot throughout his career. In high school, he had two ACL tears, missed his junior year, came back with a solid senior year, and then he will head to Boulder. Colorado closer. Six-point lead to protect for Tennessee. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about a 10-point lead. Tennessee with all the momentum. Scobie, now where do you go? Who, who's going to be your answer? By Keon Johnson. I like that. I like that. Shot that one with confidence. He's telling Coach Barnes right now, hey, I'm not willing to sit and be the sixth man or the seventh man. I want to get into that starting lineup. Camley Wright starting to attack. Oh. Going too strong and off to foul call. Yeah, they may, they may up. take a look at this if uh, got hit right in the face here. They may, they may take another look at this. Oh, man. Tough cut there. Yeah. Just under his right eye as Muscovy will be attended to. Roger, you're too young for this, but, you know, for old timers like me, I, I well remember when, when you had a cut like that, you went to the fight, do the, the cut doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, you know, old boxing guy. Oh, he got hit by his own guy. Keon Johnson, yeah. yeah. Keon got him. Friendly fire. That's tough to see. Chad Newman will take care of him. Longtime athletic trainer for the Tennessee basketball program. Scobie's had a very balanced game for Tennessee. And again, he's much improved from what we saw a year ago when he was thrown into the fire to begin SEC play. Yeah, he's thrown into the fire. And man, he's, he's really handled himself well. Uh, kudos to him for stepping in, uh, enrolling mid-year. And, and knocking down six threes in your very first SEC basketball game. Coach Barnes and the staff said, hey, you don't have to play right away. You can you know, sit the rest of the year out. But after the Turner injury, he said, no, nope, I'm going to be here. I want to play. And he was able to make his debut less than a week later and did some really good work after that. Yeah, you know, and, you know, we talked about how well Tennessee was playing down the stretch, but where would they be without Santiago? Because Josiah Jordan James was really struggling to find his place on the team. Lamonte left, uh, and you know it, it fell on Jordan Bowden. So all of that pressure. Where would they be without Biscovi? Well, he was able to play a lot again. He went home to Uruguay, and they were able to play some five-on-five -five basketball. The pandemic in Uruguay was not at the same levels as some other places, so he got to play really elite five-on-five. -five. That helped him over the summer, and also just got to relax, got to go surfing. Yeah, yeah. Tennessee surfing from downtown. Yeah, and, and one of the things that we're noticing right now is that these young pups are not afraid to take down or to knock down big shots. Jaden Springer with six points in his Tennessee debut. Turnover on Colorado. Jaden Springer gets his feet set right here, does his homework early, knocks down the big time three. Springer the three, Johnson the assist. Should Tennessee fans get used to that? Yeah, I think they're going to get used to that. I really do. You know, this is very much so an audition for, for Coach Barnes because that bench is so deep. You know, you look at someone like Big Ticket Gaines that had to step over here right now. Fulkerson to Pons. Similar spots where you want to see Pons get the basketball. Now Fulkerson beat Springer. Fulkerson. 
The spin. Just couldn't connect, but there's Pons with the board. Eve. Oh, Pons left it a bit short. You just want to see something go down for Eve Pons. You know, they're doing all of that dirty work on the inside. But, you know, there's a there's a lid. There's, a, there's something on that cylinder right now. Just can't buy a bucket. Sure, what the what the call was there? Fell on Victor Bailey Jr. So it'll be his second. The basketball back to Colorado, and if they're going to make a move, it has to be now. Yeah, you know, there's five and a half minutes left, and they're going to they're going to have to uh, make a move here. That's that's the right call. Right call. Bailey pushing under the basket, yeah. right on Maddox Daniels. It's the right call. Originally in the arena, it was called on Fulkerson, but again, yeah. they mint after they were able to get it going. They mint Victor Bailey Jr., and now they'll soak it out of the scores table. Early season for the officials, too. You know, this is uh, this is just starting off here, and they've got the, the correct call here. You know, they will go home and watch footage as well and make sure that they've got all their I's dotted and T's crossed and, and be ready for their next event. Coach Barnes knows the rules. He's on the rules committee. And speaking of the rules committee, Tad Boyle has been the chairman of the rules committee in the NCAA. So yeah. these are two coaches that know officiating as well as anything. Fulkerson going to work. Yeah, he did a great job. Principal of verticality there. Great job. Victor Bailey off the back iron. Hans flies in for the board. Still Tennessee basketball. Yeah, he's not letting his his uh, shooting affect the fact that he is still getting after it on the offensive end. Turnover on Tennessee. Here come the Buffs. Bartholomew knocks down the layup. Nine point game. And nearly another turnover, and now it's going back again to Colorado. Wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the call is here. I, I'm not, I'm not totally sure what, what happened there. Let's see if we can see that again. It's a bad pass to start off with. But that, to me, that's a play on. That, that is absolutely a play on. That's what the freshmen are going to have to watch, those turnovers, because that'll be the first thing that if they're not taking care of the basketball, we'll have to head back to the bench. Right now that's where Keon Johnson is, but Tennessee with Springer getting the steal. Springer. Locking foul called on Colorado and Sean Schwartz. Yeah, I think that's a good call. It's a good call. Now, if you're James Springer, you, you don't have the advantage there in terms of numbers. And, you know, as he matures, he's going to see that and he's going to pull it out. See there, there are no advantages in terms of numbers for Tennessee. You pull that out, you reset the offense, and see if you can get a better look. Springer with six points in his Tennessee debut. Freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, projected as a first-round pick in next year's NBA draft off the mark. Nine-point game, make it seven. Yeah, that, that is bad defense. You know, you can't let the ball go the length of the floor uh, without too many passes if you're Tennessee coming off of a missed free throw. Under four minutes to go. Ball's nursing a seven-point lead. Just ate their last 10 shots. Scovey back in after the cut under his right eye a moment ago. And the Scovey off the mark there. That's too close for him. You know, he's, he's, he's used to knocking down threes there. That 15-footer is not going to be something that he's going to be accustomed to doing. Kenley Wright, the fourth. Off the back iron, Pons tried to get it to Vescovi. Still Colorado basketball. We come back and we've got a game in the season opener. It's Tennessee holding on to a seven-point lead at home against Colorado. Lead with only 3.26 to go in the season opener for the 12th-ranked Volunteers. 
Seen some good debuts already for some top SEC freshmen. Very talented across the league, including Jaden Springer with Big Orange. Yeah, and there's one missing right there. One obvious, obvious uh, player that's missing is Keon Johnson. I mean, you talk about a group of freshmen right there that can go out and play with anybody in the country. It's a great group of kids right there that are growing up. Uh, you know, hopefully for these coaches, very, very quickly they're going to grow up. I've seen some good things from Keon Johnson in his debut. Same can be said from Jaden Springer, but some teaching moments as well. Yeah, some teaching moments. And truth be told, we talked about this off the air. Coach Barnes really likes this. You know, a tough game, close game, first game. You know, you're used to playing uh, uh, the UT Martins. You're used to, to having some games in which you're going to win comfortably. But this type of game is going to pay dividends, not right now, but later on in the season. Balls just have not been able to do much with the shutdown they had a few weeks ago, only really getting to practice hard up and down the floor three times in the last two weeks. And you know, Davidson scrimmage, the exhibition game, it's just been tough going to kind of figure all this out against a Pac-12 team to begin the year. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, it's mixing and infusing the talent with the younger guys. And, and, but at the same time, the younger guys, as I said before, they don't know what they don't know. The older guys are still trying to figure it out as well through this pandemic. It's tough for everybody. Colorado's been 2-0. They haven't played since late November. Here's Batty going to work, and he makes it a five-point game. Great move by Batty. You know, he felt beside Jordan James on his left hip, spun away from it. On his right hip, excuse me, spun away from it. That's own defense from Colorado. Alderson floats it up, and That's John Fulkerson with the answer. He's got to do that. You know, he's got to take his time there. If they're going to leave him, go ahead and shoot that. And, and if they're backed off too far, take that one dribble and get a little closer. Seven-point lead again, two and a half minutes to go. Kenley Wright. Eight points today. Pushes off against Pons. Yeah, he's really struggled. And, and Pons, again, we talk about Pons being on the All-SEC defensive team. We talk about him being able to defend positions one through five. This is a prime example. Sits down, moves his feet, slides his feet, sells it a little bit. Okay? That's a great defensive stop by E. Pons. Training SEC Defender of the Year. Wouldn't be surprised if he's able to do it once again. Herbert Jones of Alabama may have something to say about it. But Pons, it's got to start with the defense from him after he's had a tough night shooting going one of nine from the floor. Yeah, you know, this is where his leadership is going to come into play. You know, he, he has really struggled to put the ball in the basket, but good things are going to come for him. Once he gets his, his footing, good things are going to come. He has had 10 rebounds, so that's been good. Balls with a seven point lead. James driving. Couldn't hit there, but a foul call. Yeah, that, that is a shot that he has to make because what has happened, he misses the shot, and then you compound it. Now with an offensive foul, that gives Colorado a chance to shoot the one and one and cut the lead down further. You got to make these. Foul is on Pons, his second. So now they can cut it to five with two minutes left. Rye Horn to the line. 13 points for him. He's been the top scorer today. Hasn't missed from the line yet. And now he's three of three. He's pure from the line. Hasn't missed a free throw all year now. Perfect five of five. And he's the only guy that's played tonight that's in double figures. Tennessee still does not have a guy in double figures. Low scoring debut for the Vols. Colorado in its third game. It's been a week since they last played. Five point game, Tennessee with the ball. Now Tennessee's got to get into some good sets there. The bread and butter, Colorado is, is trying to get back to this man to man here. Tennessee's really hurt them in the first half against that man to man. Fulkerson off the mark. That's not a good look. Buffs with the ball down five, a minute 37 to go. Kimley Wright. Now 
if you're Eve, you got to stay there to help. Santiago's got a much bigger guy on him. Tip by James, right to Fulkerson, Tennessee basketball. Now you pass it up and utilize the clock here. Timeout, Tennessee. Timeout, Tennessee. Here's our Saturday college football triple header right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number eight, Georgia, five and three, Missouri, who won three straight, kicked things off at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Then Tennessee takes on Vanderbilt. And at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, it's Auburn and Mississippi State in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Tennessee with the timeout, holding on to the basketball, up five. What do the balls need to do here? Yeah, you know, I think that you want to utilize the entire shot clock unless you got something wide open. You got 24 seconds here that you want to utilize. You want to take it down as close to zero as you can get it. That takes the clock, the, the main clock down to under a minute. So you take it down as close as you can get it to zero and score. Then that puts Colorado in the world of hurt because now you're down seven under a minute left. I think that's a ball game. Very balanced scoring. No one really with a breakout game as Tennessee shot 36% as a team. Colorado at 34%. Two teams that you can tell it's not been their normal practice with all the COVID-19 starts and stops we've seen over the last few weeks. And we expected a little bit of rust. That's what we've seen tonight. 52 to 47 in the final two minutes. Tennessee works with the basketball. Fulkerson. Look for Tennessee late in the shot clock to come and set a high pick and roll screen here and create that action. John Fulkerson draws the foul. He'll go the line. One more get Fulkerson one on one at the sweet spot there and let him go to work. Tennessee did a great job of clearing out. Now that's his sweet spot. It's one on one. Fortunately enough for Tennessee, there was a foul draw. Horn with the foul, his second. Anderson, one of two at the line so far today. Got it to go. Now he's first of all in double figures with 10 points. Yeah, now this is a big free throw here because right now, still a two possession game here. He makes this free throw that extends it to a three possession game with under a minute left. Ball's up seven. Some pressure on Colorado. Tennessee's got to do a good job of playing without fouling here. You don't want to stop the clock. Schwartz around his defender. No foul. Tennessee gets the ball back. Now, if you're Colorado, you got to foul, don't you? I mean, you, you, you can't stand around. Already putting Tennessee in the bonus. Horn call for his third foul. Santiago Vescovi the line trying to extend Tennessee's lead. 35 seconds to go. Yes. Tonight on the SEC Network after Jackson State, Mississippi State, the SEC Now team will have a complete breakdown of all the games as well as interviews with coaches and players right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Vescovi two for two and Tennessee needs it most. Yeah, you know, Vescovi calmly knocked down those two free throws. That's a nine point game and Colorado's got to go fast. Tennessee's doing a great job of creating some full court pressure, not allowing Colorado just to move the ball before quickly. Batty. And now in three, but he stepped out. So the ball's trying to put this one in the win column, move to 1-0 on the year. Up next, talented Cincinnati team on Saturday. Oh, doesn't get any easier, does it? No. I mean, you know, you, you want one of those schools that will come in and just kind of lay down for you. But, you know, out of the gates, you're playing Colorado, talented in the Pac-12, and then Cincinnati, uber talented. Up seven fouled yet. Find Victor Bailey, Jr. And Tennessee will try and dribble it out. 
Volunteers had to wait a long time to start this season, but it starts with a win in Knoxville. Tonight's final score from Thompson Bowling Arena, it's Tennessee 56, Colorado 47. Yeah, great job by Tennessee. Uh, you know, was it the high-flying action, blocks, dunks, all that stuff that you're, you're accustomed to? No, but a solid opening season win over a really good basketball team from Bowling. Volunteers get the win. Next up, Cincinnati on Saturday here in Knoxville. So for Steve Hamer and our entire crew, I'm Roger Hoover saying so long from Knoxville, where the final score is Tennessee 56, Colorado 47. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, you can log on to ESPN.com or you can download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the SEC ESPN Network.